Hey everybody, I told you 2020 is going to be a year of amazing titles and I have eight new releases that are on my shelf ready for me to read that I want to share with you. So we better get started so that you can get all of these books on your TBR. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I am doing fantastic. I hope you guys are having a great week or weekend or whenever you're watching this video. I hope that you are having a fantastic time. As always, I hope your reading is going really, really well. As I have been saying all year long, 2020 is going to be full of so many amazing titles. I cannot stop buying books. I cannot stop getting books and I cannot stop reading, but I can't read fast enough. The problem of all us readers, right? But today I'm going to share with you eight releases that have come out in 2020 that I think you guys are going to want on your TBR because I am so excited about them. So as always, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, get out however you take care of your TBR and get ready to add some titles. As always, if you're able, please get these books at your local independent bookstore and or if you are a library user, get your library to get you a copy as soon as possible. So the first book we're going to start with, I'm, I'm actually very intrigued by, and it is a YA contemporary Korean American version of Anna Karenina. And it is Anna K by Jenny Lee. And this is out from Flatiron Books. Now, this is the story of Anna Kay. She is a young Korean American woman. She leads a very straightforward life, always sort of above it all. She has a very straightforward boyfriend, nothing exciting, nothing interesting. It's just her life goes along. She never lets her parents down. You know, exactly how it is expected to be, she is. Until she meets Alexei. Count Vronsky. Funny enough, uh, Vronsky was a name of one of my cats years and years and years ago um, because I was obsessed with the original Anna Karenina. And so I had a cat named Vronsky. So she meets Vronsky and he is everything she's not. And their love is something they've never experienced before. And is it going to change them are they going to change each other in a permanent way? How is life going to be affected? All of that teenage angst deliciousness that we absolutely love. Now, we're all very familiar with the opening famous lines of Anna Karenina, but on the back here it says, every happy teenage girl is the same while every unhappy teenage girl is miserable in her own special way. Kind of a fun play on that very famous couple opening lines. So that is Anna K by Jenny Lee out from Flat Iron Books. The next book I just literally picked up, um, and I don't know actually even how to explain it, so I'll let the author and the blurb do it, but this is Black Girl Unlimited, The Remarkable Story of a Teenage Wizard by Echo Brown. Now, this is said to be part memoir, part magical fantasy story, and a very sort of fantastical coming of age story, young girl coming of age story. So it says Echo Brown is a wizard from the east side of Cleveland where apartments are small and parents suffer addictions to the white rocks. Yet there is magic everywhere. New portals begin to open when Echo transfers to the rich white school on the west side and an insightful teacher becomes a pivotal mentor. Each day Echo travels between worlds, leaving her brothers, her friends, and a piece of herself on the east side. There are dangers to leaving behind the place that made you. Echo soon recognizes the pain flowing through everyone around her, and a black veil of depression threatens to undo everything she so worked so hard for. So, one, this cover is gorgeous. It's got this texture to it I am obsessed with. I think that story sounds amazing. You can get this book now. So that's Black Girl Unlimited. This is out from Henry Holt by Echo Brown. Okay. Next is one of those books that everybody I know has been talking about. Everybody I know has absolutely loved it, from Matthew Sarapa to Garth Greenwell to all sorts of people. It is blurbed by Roxane Gay, Kiese Lemon, Esme Weijan Wing, Daniel Evans, and Garth Greenwell. And that is Real Life by Brandon Taylor. And I have been waiting not very patiently for this book to come out. And it is out from Riverhead Books. This is the story of a young, queer, black boy. A uh, boy. He's a man, I guess. He's in college. Um, I think everyone in college is still a boy because I'm so far removed from college. Um, and he leads a very sort of straightforward, secluded, secreted life because he's in the Midwest. 
and um, he sort of keeps who he is to himself. And it says here that for reasons of self-preservation, Wallace has enforced a wary distance even with his own circle of friends. But over the course of a late summer weekend, a series of confrontations with colleagues in an uninspected counter within Austin's un un ostens ostensibly, that word took me a minute. You know how you guys sometimes are reading and you look at a word and you're like, I know that word. Ostensibly straight white classmate conspired to fracture his defenses while exposing long hidden currents of hostility and desire within the community. Everyone I know has absolutely loved this book. Sounds like it has a little bit of a um, campus novel feel to it as well. I'm ecstatic. I cannot wait to read it. Real life, Brandon Taylor out now from Riverhead Books. And that just came out, so. When I read about this next book, I knew I had to get my hands on it, and I'm utterly obsessed with The Regrets by Amy Bonifons. I'm gonna hold her name up there for you. This is out from Little Brown. All I'm gonna tell you about this, this is about a young, well, it's about two young people. One is a young boy who has passed away. He is a spirit. He has sort of like a, um, time he has to remain on the planet uh, as a spirit before he can transcend to the next level. And he is sitting on a, a bus bench when he meets a young girl and their relationship takes off. But spirits are encouraged to have no relationships with the people of the world because they will then create regrets which can keep them from moving on. But what do you do when after your death you've met the person that you were supposed to spend your life with? That's The Regrets by Amy Bonifons by Henry Holt and I think it sounds fantastic. This book actually I bought and was found by my husband. He does this thing where he walks around the bookstore and he'll pick up a book and he'll be like, oh my gosh, have you read this? And I'll be like, no, have you? And he'll be like, of course, it was fabulous. And he's never read the book, but he'll pick and he'll read the stories. And then I'll be like, I think you should get this one. And that's what happened with um, The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. And this is out by Little Brown as well. I think that cover is absolutely stunning. Stunning. And this is set in 1617 Norway. So we're on a small fishing island where a young woman is standing on the coast and watches a ship uh, sink, killing 40 men that were on the ship, including her brother and her father. And what winds up happening on this island is the women come together and they have to be, find a way to support themselves now that the, all of these men have passed away. Uh, we fast forward three years later and a Scottish man comes with his young Norwegian wife to the island with the intent of curing the paganism or the lack of God that is on this island. But the young wife sees a place where she's never seen women this strong and independent and her and the other main character create a friendship. And um, I think that's all I need to know. It says, as the two young women are drawn to each other in ways that surprise them both, the island begins to close in on them and the husband's iron rule threatening the island's very existence. So that is The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. And this is out now from Little Brown. Doesn't that sound fantastic? My husband did a good job picking that one out. My next book is my other book of the month club choice, and that's The Girl with the Loud Voice by Abby Dare. And this is out now from Dal Dalton, right? Dalton? Dalton. And um, I don't know a whole lot about this other than Shelf by Shelf on Instagram raved about it. And so this is the story of Aduni. She's 14 years old. She's a young Nigerian girl who all she wants to do is be educated. She wants an education. But she's the only daughter of a broke father. She's a valuable commodity. Removed from school and sold as a third wife to an old man, she finds that her life amounts to this. Four goats, two bags of rice, some chickens, and a new TV. When unspeakable tragedy swiftly strikes in her new home, she is secretly sold as a domestic servant to a household in the wealthy enclaves of Lagos, where no one will talk about the strange disappearance of her predecessor, Rebecca. No one but Aduni. As a yielding daughter, a subservient wife, and a powerless servant, Aduni is repeatedly told that she is nothing but she won't be silenced. She is determined to find her voice in a whisper and a song in broken English until she can speak for herself, for the girls like Rebecca who came before her, and for all the girls that will follow. Yeah, nothing more needed there, right? The Girl with a Loud Voice by Abby Dar, and this is out from Dalton right now, and does, and I think this was picked for someone's book club. I can't remember whose, I apologize. Um, but yeah, no, that sounds fantastic. Okay, two more books to tell you about. This is 
The Lost Book of Adana Morio by Michael Zapata. I love a book about a book. You guys know this about me. I know a lot of us do. I know that readers love books about books. So what we have here is this, uh, this author, who is fictional, Adana Moreau, has written this book. Um, let me see if I can get what it's called here. It's in 1929, New Orleans, she wrote a book called The Lost City. And it sort of became sort of a cult favorite. And she was in the process of writing book two when she passed away from illness and she burned the only copy or so we thought. Decades later, Chicago, this young man from his dying grandfather gets a package. It's a package to deliver to the grandson of the author, Adana Murillo. Um, he tries to send it and it comes back. It comes back undeliverable. He opens the package and finds out that it is a copy of this lost second book. And it says that he goes on a search to figure out who is the author. How did Saul's grandfather, a Jewish immigrant born on a steamship, come across this lost manuscript? With the help of his friend Javier, Saul tracks down the address for Maxwell in New Orleans, and just as Hurricane Katrina strikes, the two head south to the storm's ravaged city and search for answers. A book about a book with an adventure. Do we need any more? It's not a very big book. I would expect, I just, I automatically expect with all of that, this is going to be like one of those sagas, but he's going to wrap it up pretty quickly. And so that's The Lost Book of Adana Murillo by Ma Michael Sabata. And this is out from Hanover Square Press. Obsessed. I'm so excited about this one. Last but not least, again, is another one of my Book of the Month Club books, and that is um, Topics of Conversation by Miranda Popke. Um, and a lot of people, I guess, have been comparing this to Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney, but it sounds very different to me in a couple ways. So this is, we have an unnamed narrator, and it's really told, it's a story told in conversations between women. Women about their lives, about their struggles, and I, I think the way it says it, they tell stories to each other, stories about shame, love, infidelity, and self-sabotage that create careens through 20 years in life of an unnamed narrator hungry for an experience and bent on changing her life. I think that sounds so good. Now, this is a much bigger um, Book of the Month Club version. The actual published copy is super tiny and absolutely adorable, and it takes all my power all my power not to buy myself a second copy, but I'm not going to. And that's Topics of Conversation by Miranda Popke, and this is out from Knopf. And yeah, so this is eight books. Do not all eight of these, I'm gonna to try to stack them on here so I can hold them up for you guys as I always do. Um, don't all of these sound absolutely fantastic? Don't you wanna read every single one of them? So there is that stack right there. Let's put that in the frame. As always, I wish you guys, oh, as always, if you are a return subscriber, I say thank you so very, very much. I need you guys to watch because if you don't watch, I don't have a channel. If you are new to my channel, I hope you subscribe. I hope you come back for more content and I hope every single one of these books winds up on your TBR. As always, I encourage you to shop locally, read globally, and until next time, I wish you happy reading. Bye.